There was a time when survival itself was so terrifying, most homo sapiens found their greatest pleasure in simply feeling safe and secure. But for most of us, not anymore. People are now spending millions, maybe billions, looking for thrills, searching for the most terrifying experience they can find. Rock climbing, skydiving, bungee cord jumping, whitewater rafting, searching high and low for that ultimate, most terrifying roller coaster ride. the space age high-tech steel coasters that many enthusiasts consider the ultimate ride it's an old dilapidated wooden one built in 1927 it's a wrong ways up I'm looking for broken trikes i don't see nothing yet that i have to replace every morning on the days the cyclone is open Director of Maintenance, Walter Williams, can be found walking these tracks, inspecting beams, looking for loose nails, checking out cracks. Yeah, this here step here seemed to be a little loose. Better put a nail in it. Okay, that's better. In the past five years, Williams has virtually rebuilt the entire 3,000-foot coaster inch by inch, plank by plank. Because I make sure that it is safe to ride every day. That is my job. That's why I be here every day to walk it, to check it. I think I got it all. I think we're going to have a good day today. Fifteen million people have ridden the cyclone. As one reporter noted, the cyclone is as valuable to New York City as the Statue of Liberty or Empire State Building. People's comes on here, streaming, waving, cheering. Sometimes they be crying when they get off. I guess that's the thrill they get out of it. The cars are pulled by a chain belt to the top of the first hill. After that, gravity keeps them going. There's no stopping and no slowing down until the end. For me, once was enough. I felt like I was going to die and. Uh... And I swore I would never get on it again. After riding the cyclone, Charles Lindbergh is reported to have said, a ride on a cyclone is a greater thrill than flying an airplane at top speed. Uh, this chap had lost his voice, and he'd gone from doctor to doctor to doctor, and nothing uh, helped. And a cousin of his, who lived in Brooklyn, took him down to ride the cyclone. And when he finished riding the cyclone, at the end of the ride, he said, I feel sick. The voice was back. The coaster takes six van turns and nine drops, including a first plunge of about 90 feet at a speed of 60 miles an hour. All sorts of things are left behind. At the end of the day, we find wigs, 
hats, sometimes false teeth. We found an artificial finger once. The wood construction means no two rides are ever quite the same. It bends, shakes, and creaks just a little bit differently each time. Oh, the wooden ones are by far the best. The higher I bounce, the better I like it. Sometimes you almost stand up. <laughs> The obsession with roller coasters dates back to the days of Tsarist Russia in the 16th century. The Tsarina had ice slides built for her children and then for her subjects. But they enjoyed them so much they decided they would try it in the summertime and made uh, hills out of wood and put rollers on their sleds. The French soon followed with their own elaborate version. Across the Atlantic, railway coal cars were turned into joy rides. A savvy Philadelphia Sunday school teacher put the cars on wheels and opened the switchback railway at Coney Island in 1884. An operator pushed a 10-person car to the top of the track, let go, and passengers sped down over 450 feet at six miles an hour. At five cents a ride, it proved to be a very profitable venture for its inventor. His ride made $600 a day. He became a very wealthy man. By the 1920s, there were almost 2,000 roller coasters across America. Every major city had one. Couples met, courted, and were married on them. They said their vows at the top of the lift hill, and when they said, I do, they plunged right into it. <laughs> but the Depression and World War II brought hard times for amusement parks and their rides. Coasters forgotten and neglected were no longer considered safe. Only a few remained. But with the 70s came a roller coaster renaissance. Theme parks drew large crowds. New, improved technology meant bigger, faster, safer coasters. Computers were used to design, control, and drive the rides. Strong steel frames offered smooth, sleek rides in endless configurations. The Anaconda opened in Virginia in 1991. It took 19 months and $5 million to build the 2,700-foot track, every foot of it monitored by a computer. The Anaconda dives into a tunnel underwater, which no other looping coaster in the world does. It also does six corkscrews in less than 50 seconds and a butterfly loop. It takes you up 130 feet and drops you down a 144-foot plunge. All of this is possible because of today's individual restraint systems. Number 296 for me, you know. That was fun, but my poor ears, they hurt! But for many, for the best in cheap thrills and sheer terror, there is nothing quite like the creaking and clanking of those old planks at Coney Island's Cyclone. The feeling for this roller coaster is hard to explain. It's something that you uh, get out of it that you don't get out of any other roller coaster that you go on. Nothing like riding it. It's nice to know that all the high tech in the world can't always make things better, even cheap thrills. We hope the cyclone at Astroland Park at Coney Island will be around a long time. Enjoyed it. For Invention, I'm Lucky Severson. Tomorrow night, the movie's most amazing special effects from Star Wars to Superman. See how they do it on Hollywood Stuntmakers at 10 Eastern. But now, advances in eye surgery from beyond tomorrow.